Almighty, the mercy of God, I confess that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I ignored your commands. I hated your laws, and I do not deserve to be called your child. But I have heard the promise of forgiveness given by your Son, Jesus Christ, and I look to him for forgiveness. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. It was God's choice to die, and he did not do it to add to our guilt, but to take our guilt away. Therefore, by the atonement made, by, made for us by Christ, and as his called servant, I assure you, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So they said to one another, let's not tear it. Instead, let's cast, lot, cast lots to see who gets it. This was so that the scripture would be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So the soldiers did these things, and they sat down and were keeping watch over him there. 
People who passed by kept insulting him, shaking their heads, saying, you who were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Those who were crucified with him also insulted him. In the same way, the chief priests, experts in the law, and elders kept mocking him. They said, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. If he's the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. He wants him, because he said, I am the son of God. One of the criminals hanging there was blaspheming him, saying, Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? We are punished justly, for we're receiving what, our, what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Amen, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus' mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene were standing near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time, this disciple took her into his own home. It was now about the sixth hour. And darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun was darkened. At the ninth hour, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. After this, knowing that everything had now been finished, and to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there. Immediately, one of the friends took a sponge and soaked it with sour wine. Then he put it on a stick and gave him a drink. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Suddenly, the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks were split. Tombs were opened, and many bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised to life. Those who came out of the tombs went into the holy city after Jesus' resurrection and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those who were guarding Jesus with him saw the earthquake and how he cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last, they were terrified and began to glorify God, saying, This man really was righteous. Truly, this was the Son of God. When all the groups of people who had gathered to see the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their chests. All those who knew Jesus, and many women who had followed Jesus from Galilee, who had served him, were there, watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, uh, Salome, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Since it was preparation day, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses over the Sabbath, because that Sabbath was a particularly important day. They asked Pilate to have the men's legs broken and the bodies taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who was crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other man. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. Immediately, blood and water came up. The one who saw it has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is telling the truth, so that you also may believe. Indeed, these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. Again, another scripture says, they will look at the one they had pierced. So far the history of our Savior's
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The part of God's Word that we will consider together today is taken from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and he said to them, You brought me this man as one who is misleading the people. Look, I have examined him in your presence and have found in this man no basis for the charges you're bringing against him. Herod did not eat him, for he sent him back to us. See, he's done nothing worthy of death. So I will have him flogged and released him. This is the word of God. Please be seated. Dear Christian friends, there are times when close is close enough. If you're out with friends and somebody um, pays for the dinner and you want to give them your half and it comes out to like $17 and you have 15 they probably say that's close. You know. If you're parking a car and you're about two and a half feet away from the, from the curb, you might think that's close But there are times when close is not close enough. If I'm having heart surgery and the surgeon is reattaching my carotid artery, close is not close enough. It has to be precisely where it needs to be. How about with God's law? How often do we sometimes, are, are we sometimes tempted to think that close is close enough? That I am supposed to serve God with all of my heart. But if I can manage 80%, is that close enough? Or I am supposed to study the Lord's Word every single day. But if I miss one, is that close enough? Consider the standard that Jesus set. When he said, here is the standard that you're supposed to meet, he did not say, make sure that you're better than the people who live in this city with you. They don't, he didn't say, make sure you can find someone that if you compare yourself, you come off looking pretty good. He said, be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. That's the standard. Absolutely unfailing perfection. Where can we find that? We can't generate that on our own. But God gives it to us as a gift. And here, in Luke chapter 23, we see yet another instance where close was not close enough. Jesus would meet every single facet, every single command, everything that was re required of him, he would need. Even though the people around him were looking for close enough, Jesus would settle for nothing less than perfection. Pilate, he called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people. And what's interesting about that is that Pilate and that other group, the rulers, the chief priests, and the people, were on opposite sides. Pilate wanted to set Jesus free. The chief priests, the rulers, and the people wanted Jesus to die. And even though they were on polar opposites, none of them were on God's side. So how many sides are there? In fact, there are two. There's God's side and everybody else. Because while everybody else may be divided, and while everybody else may disagree, they're all on the wrong side of God's law. So when Pilate brought Jesus in, the only thing that mattered was who was on God's side. The fact was, he wasn't. The rulers weren't. The chief priests weren't. The people weren't. Jesus was. And he said to them, you brought me this man 
and you brought this man to me as someone who is misleading the people. And the tragedy of that is that he didn't really care what Jesus was teaching. It's a very real possibility he didn't even know what Jesus was teaching. And for the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, what really bothered them was not so much what Jesus was teaching. Because if they had studied that, if they had considered that, and compared that to this is what the Lord said, they would have found out he's teaching exactly the right thing. What bothered them was that Jesus was more popular than they. That he was getting in the way of their plans. And so he had to go. And the tragedy of that salvation was right there. God's law in all of its purity. God's gospel in all of its grace. And they were so focused on their own agenda that they missed it. Same tragedy today. God's word is here. We teach it, we share it. And how many are so focused on their own agenda that they miss it? The Pharisees, teachers of the law, pretty convinced they were doing something important. Certainly important for them, arguably important for the people, but important enough that they had no time to hear what Jesus was saying. Pilate wasn't so much interested in what Jesus was saying as he wasn't keeping the peace. Herod said, we sent him to Herod. Herod found nothing worthy of death in him because he sent him back to us. Herod just wanted him to be entertaining. And everyone missed the Savior. Pilate's offering a comfort. Why don't we see if we can get close enough? I will have him flogged and then release him. Not perfect. It's not what Pilate wanted. Pilate recognized here's an innocent man. And if anyone stood before him innocent, this was the most innocent man he had ever seen. Because even the people who wanted him <coughs> to be guilty couldn't find anything to convict him. So he said, I'll have him flogged. Wouldn't be right to have him flogged, but better than crucifixion. Is that close enough to justice? Well, it wasn't close enough for the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Because if he were flogged and let go, he'd still be there. They wanted him gone completely. They wanted him crucified. wasn't close enough for our Heavenly Father, whose justice demanded that sin be completely paid for. And a flogging wouldn't do it. Simply humiliation would not do it. Pain would not do it. <coughs> you had to suffer the wrath of God. He had to suffer the pain of hell. He had to carry our sins and suffer the pain of death. Otherwise, there would be no justification. There would be no righteousness to offer to us. Pilate's offer was not close enough because it wasn't perfect. And the reason that we celebrate during Lent, the reason that we remember his sacrifice is because it is perfect. That our salvation is finished. We just read that from John chapter 19. It is finished. He didn't say, well, it's close enough. That wouldn't help anyone. It's finished. 
absolute perfection, from an absolutely perfect city, generated by absolutely perfect love, offered to us. We don't deserve it, but it's ours by grace. So we remember, and we celebrate, and we worship. Please write this. The peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
whose name we pray. Our Father, Father who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy, will, come. thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.